I'm cutting and I'm looking. So I feel like, you know, those guys at the sushi bars, right? And because um, you see everything as you're cutting and, and you see that guy that you ask him if it's his first time and he's like, yeah, I'm really excited to eat here. And he's sitting right there, right there. So he gets his first piece of brisket and he puts it in his mouth and he's like, You can read what he's saying to his wife or his friends, and that's so cool, you know? They really enjoy your food. You know, this is the stuff that you start off in your backyard, and now people are driving hours to come and eat it. It's pretty cool, man. Today we have probably like 500 pounds of brisket. Brisket is king here, just like every other barbecue joint. Uh, so we do a lot of briskets. Those pits just don't stop when, you know, we start on Tuesday and they don't stop till tomorrow. And uh, those are my workhorses, as they say. You know, my, my day starts getting here at three in the morning. Um, you know, I do a little walk through, make sure everything's good. Tells me how much, how much beans I should make and how much size we should have ready for the day. And then I come in and start trimming and start seasoning for tomorrow, you know? It's, we always, we're always a day ahead, always a day ahead. So I get all the meats and take, take them to the pit room and I get ready for the day. Um, I crank them up, I get the, the turkeys and, and the ribs and everything on one pit and then um, get the briskets on the others. We do a lot of literally low and slow. We don't do anything hot and fast here. Our ribs, you know, take a good eight to nine hours. I like to get that fat rendered just right. You know, a lot of people complain lately that, that barbecue is so expensive. And I, I think people don't understand that the most expensive thing is not the price of, of the meats, but it's, it's the time. You know, the price of time is valuable. And I mean, by time, it, it takes, you know, you know, 26 hour process to cook the briskets. It's my time, you know what I mean? We put a lot of labor of love and to value my time, people don't, don't see that, you know? People are like, oh, barbecue's supposed to be cheap. Well, you know, barbecue back in the day was, is, is cheap because the, the cuts were, were, were cheap. Now everything's so expensive and, and, and we have to make a living because just as much as how everything in life is expensive if you go to the grocery stores, you know, we gotta live too. So, um, you know, we don't do this for free. We do it for a labor of love because, you know, to do this in and out 17, 18 hour days is literally a labor of love. I don't think a lot of people go into this thinking that it's one of these nine to five bank jobs that, that, that people have. Um, you either have to love it or, you, or, you, or you're going to get burned out really quick. Um, and that's the one thing that people don't understand is that, you know, people are like, oh, man, it's so cool. You got lines and. Um, you got a lot of followers and a lot of people praise your barbecue and it's so good. But people don't realize how much, how much time and effort you have to put in this game. Everybody's gonna have their definition of what they think is good barbecue. And it might not be the standard of, of what the founders or the owners wanted, but it's still good. But here, there's only two dudes you can blame. It's either me or Dave, you know what I mean? Uh, Dave, Dave Kirkland is, is my business partner and um, really good friend for the past, you know, 13, 14 years. But our standards are so high, it's really cool to have someone that understands where you're coming from when it comes to what I eat and my standards are here. And he just picked it up and he just got it from day one when we met so many years ago. My son always says, Dad, you always walk with a purpose. It's like, I'm always, I'm going. I've, I've already, already got my day planned. I know my agenda, I know what I need to get done. And when I walk in in the mornings, uh, like I said, I show up around now because that's when, you know, stuff starts going down and it's about ready. And so when I come in here, I open and check everything, see where everything's at, make mental notes. And then I start working, acting just like that. And my focus is on the proteins, but as well as the operations of the entire building everything else that goes on here so in a partnership when you have two chefs together there's a lot of headbutting because one's always thinking their side's better than the other with us it's not like that 
he has full control of that side. I have full control of this side. So there's never any headbutting, never any animosity. He's a chef. So his strong suit is the design side of it. And I'm more of the pit side, but also the mechanics of it, so to speak. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, you know, I know what I'm doing out here. He knows what he's doing in there. And it kind of balances perfectly. So as far as partnerships go, it's a really, really good balance that a lot of people don't have. You know, and I love it because they, they make sure you know that they travel at four in the morning or sometimes three in the morning from the valley to come in and have our breakfast. Or Houston, or they drove from Dallas the day before and they stay in the hotel. I gotta bring my A game. You know, these guys didn't come around, man. You know, when they, they, they say, oh, it's phenomenal, because they're tasting what I did when I burned the briskets, you know, or when I overcooked ribs or I cooked ribs raw when I was, it reminds me of the times where, you know, um, I'd be in my backyard, you know, just cooking a slab of ribs and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Reading a lot of books, trying to figure it out. I never, I never worked with anybody that taught me anything, you know what I mean? So, it's, this is from thousands of briskets or hundreds of briskets that I screwed up to make them better, you know. The briskets of today are not the same as the briskets of last year or last week. You know, we're always trying to strive to make them better, you know, uh, because this game is there's so much great, great barbecue out there. You have to be, you have to be on your A game all the time or you will get your uh, lunch eaten like big time. <laughs> Out of all the compliments I get, out of all the compliments I get about the food and how what Dave and I are doing here and how special it is and, and how people you know would willing to travel long distances, my best compliment that I take to heart is when they compliment saying, you know, Ernest, your food is phenomenal, but I have never had that friendly wait staff wait on me. They're just so nice. He goes, it feels good to be appreciated. You know, and I'm like, that's what I like to hear, that my team is doing good. I love my team. I, I think uh, any successful restaurant, anything successful, yeah, we put in our part, but it, you have to have a sense of, of a team that's willing to go to battle with you every day and be in the trenches and get their butts kicked and taking pride on where they work. And that's the bottom line here. They gotta believe in your, your philosophy. They gotta believe in everything you're, you're, you're throwing out there because I think working here is, is it's really hard, but taking pride saying, hey, yeah, man, I work at the Burn Bean. And people are like, wow, you work at the Burn Bean? There's only like eight of us. There's only eight of us. Burn Bean it wouldn't be as good as Burn Bean is without my staff. My crew is everything. And people who don't appreciate their crews, shame on them, man. If you're in the restaurant industry or any kind of service industry, you're here to make people happy to see a piece of meat to you only use uh, you know wood and uh, to tame the fires to get up here in the mornings and turn them on you know cook all day then cut close down and then repeat get ready for the next morning and then do it again and then do it again and do it again it takes its toll but um, I, I don't know if I'm weird or something but I get excited you know I get excited to see the crowds and I get excited to come every morning I wake up and um, the first initial two minutes when the alarm goes off is a different story. But after that, I really enjoy what I do. I've, 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 I guess the whole deal is that I waited all my life for this. And, and when you waited your life for something that you've wanted your whole life, it's, it, I see it more as a blessing every day I get to do it than a job. And that's the difference is that I love to come to work. I love the burnt bean. This is my baby. My whole goal is, is, is to is to be the number one barbecue joint in America, and it's gonna take time, and I'll be here every step of the way.